Hi, this is J.P. Morgan, and this is... Lars Lundstrom. And we're here for Trends from the Trenches, November edition. But the issue is, we're not sure we want to call this Trends from the Trenches anymore. We need a new name. I mean, our idea was we're in the trenches, working photographer, working videographer. We just want to show you an example of what's going on, but we need a new name. So you need to help us with a new name. Something more photo-related. More photo-related. Because if you just say Trends from the Trenches... It could be just about anything. So we want to... Some people are going, is that a World War One show? Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love history. You know, it's, but I think, I think what we want to do is throw it out to you guys, right? Absolutely. So, so if you can come up with a name that has to do with the photo, video world that's kind of creative and catchy. And cool. And, and cool. we can make a great t-shirt out of it. Yeah. Throw it in the comments. And I think, what, what do you want to do? We'll, we will give... We'll give the, the person whose name we choose, uh, if we choose one, because there's got to be one that's good. Yeah. <laughs> we'll give you a 7 1 reflector from Photoflex, which that's like, is a great, it's like 150 bucks. Oh, at least. It may be more than that, actually. All right. So there you go. That's a great gift. Uh, and so if you come up with a name, help us come up with a name for the new name for Trends for the Trenches, the new name to be determined. The name of the show will now be the show whose name will be determined. <laughs> Just a symbol. Let's a come up symbol, with a, symbol a great for this symbol show. <laughs> with purple around it. Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> no particular reason. <laughs> trying to think and more. Our, and our, more Prince and our career, and our career will disappear overnight as well. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. So let's see what's going on in the world of photography. We have cool. some interesting things to talk about today. Uh, we will get to a 7D Mark II uh, kind of review a little later in the show. So we're not going to talk too much about that up front here, but I just got back from Photo Plus. Yeah, some great stuff going on at Photo Over Plus. It was a, in New York. It was a little bit of a Photokina. Okay, we already saw it. <laughs> <laughs> Photokina. It was revealed at Photokina. Photo Plus was, and we still have it. You know, so it's about to but, come out, you guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I love Photo Plus because just getting all the creatives together. I went to several seminars there. I really enjoyed. Yeah. Met some great people there. It was wonderful. So I met Jared Poland. Shook his hand. He didn't have a clue who I am. But you know who. He but is. I know who he is. <laughs> well, you were, I, you were mentioning something that you talked to a guy there that uh, that every person he meets takes a photo. Yes, that was so Talk great. To me about that. What, what this guy's a at? he's a Facebook kind of connoisseur. He he said it's interesting. He said I'm not a Facebook person really. Like I don't use this to communicate with all my friends and all kinds of things. But he said I take a picture of everyone I meet. And I get a picture of either a selfie with me with them or a picture of the two people I just met. And then I put that on Facebook. And huh. he said, a lot of these things are, are industry clients that I've met, you know, people that are in the industry. So, so pretty soon, he's got so many of these pictures that they kind of generate. You know, when someone sees it, they, they like it. They, what do you do on Facebook? You like it. You there comment, you go. You tag yourself. Tag and, yourself. And man. so pretty soon when he meets somebody new in the industry, he's talking about art directors and creative directors. They're like going, oh yeah, I know you. I saw you in a picture with my associate over at McCann, or I saw you. So, and he's done this for three Smart. years now. He said it didn't didn't get going in the first year, but after about three years of doing that, he said it really took off. And I think it's a br it's so a brilliant I, idea. I have I have such a problem as is with names and faces. I do too. I just, it's hard for you know, and, and you can't keep track. And I'm going. You know, like, I feel like such an idiot when people are coming up to me and they're going, Hey, Lars, like, how you been, man? And I'm going, really good, been super good. And I just have no idea who they are. So I think this would help Does out Does that to bit. me every time we come here. I know, yeah. Hey, Lars. Lars. <laughs> How's it going? What are we doing, doing here? Doing great. <laughs> Where am I? What month is it? And that's really a question. <laughs> that was a question earlier. <laughs> it was. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know. So, no, I think if you start, if I were to start taking pictures of everyone I worked with and post it on Facebook and tag them, then, I mean, not only does it do wonders, like you said, for, for your social network and for eventually work, because you, you're just connected to everyone. It just helps out with names and faces. So I, I like the idea a lot. I'm going to steal it. I think it's a great idea to steal, yeah. you know? I mean, and can everyone do it? Yeah, quite frankly. I mean, yep. a lot of people can do it. It doesn't matter. Uh, it's just going to be something to kind of get your network going and make things happen. There was a lot of stuff uh, with regards for new photographers. And that's the, that's, those are the seminars I went to. Because of the business coaching class we do, I really wanted to see what young photographers were talking about, what they were doing to kind of promote their businesses. And so I went to a lot of those kinds of classes. Yeah. And so I, I'll talk a little bit more about that in my business coaching class that's uh, on on Wednesdays. But I'll probably do some kind of a, a little shout out as well, some things I learned. 
Yeah. I do know this, that I walked into, and it's bizarre for me to walk into a Starbucks because I do not drink coffee, <laughs> but we were in uh, Newport, Maine. No, Newport, Massachusetts. Okay. And I uh, walked into a Starbucks because we had a $5 gift certificate card. And Julian goes, let's go in and get a hot apple cider. So we go in, we get a cider, and the guy there goes, hey, you're J.P. Morgan from the Slanham Land. <laughs> so some dude at the counter, Alex, I believe his name was, but Alex said, I'm, I'm trying to be a photographer. I don't know what to do, uh, the next step to actually get into it. So I'm going to do a lesson talking about, I talked about the, the eight things you need to do to know you're ready, eight ways to know you're ready. We're going to talk about just doing it. What's hmm. the first thing you need to do to start to make, making to, money? To make, to money. make money in so photography. Not I like taking photography. pictures. I kind of understand the exposure triangle. I've got maybe a T3I, a T5I or whatever. How do I charge money? Hmm. Yep. Yeah, so good. where's the next step? So that's, that's the next cool. thing. So you're famous in Massachusetts. Uh, evidently, one, one guy. And we love him. Yeah. We do. Yeah. Hey, you know, one thing I might mention is that we got a steaming uh, comment. Ooh. Not from Ranger Bob, but it was another Ranger. No way. <laughs> Yes, who, who said we really didn't have a clue what we were talking about okay, when it came to the uh, National Forest Service. And, I hope uh, so. That. I hope we don't have a clue. But in reading the comment, it's a little bit semantics. When you set up a camera and a tripod and you bring a bunch of people, <laughs> you're a production. Yeah. You know, and so if you're not that, yeah. just walk around with your camera. Sure, you can shoot all you want. Yeah. But if you're not setting up lights, if you're not blocking off roads. And yeah, but once you cross that road, it's... Uh, anyway. So what, what did he say? I mean, was there any kind of new... Was he just going, you don't know what you're talking about? Or was it... Kate, hey, what did he, he have... say? <laughs> yeah. Get a clue, you knuckleheads. <laughs> okay. Get a clue, really? This is a heck of a thing to say when absolutely uh, when you absolutely misunderstood the proposed uh, regulations. I love it. First, the proposed regulation applies to wilderness areas. National parks and national forests uh, and regular national forests are completely different things. Look up the restrictions on wilderness areas. First rule, no machinery of any kind. No chainsaws, no bicycles, nothing. I wonder if like a, if one of those old Leica cameras that's not a machine, it's just that you wind the shutter and... <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I wonder if that would be fine. Um, Do you know what? I hear the crunch of granola and the soft step of uh, Birkenstocks here. Oh, gotcha. I had no idea what you were talking about for a second. I hear the crunch of granola and the soft steps of Birkenstocks. No chainsaws, no bicycles, nothing. Second, the rules applied to commercial photography only. Third, Congress mandated that the Forest Service develop a set of regulation, so don't blame the Forest Service. Who's, who's this from? I don't know. Um, I love, no, uh, Tandem Hearts. Tandem Ranger Hearts. Tandem Heart. <laughs> it's Ranger Tandem Heart. Mm, the problem, the real problem we have is it's, you can't, there's such a wide scope of shoots that you can't possibly regulate. Because there's, there's a line that they're trying to put somewhere that says zero dollars, thousands of dollars. And that's, and that's where it's not okay. Because sometimes we're out there shooting for something that only has a budget of maybe two or three hundred bucks. I don't know. It's like, or, you know, like. Well, the line becomes you set a tripod down, you set up a light. And so I, yeah. I've been through this performance for years. I mean, once you set a tripod down, you set up a light, now you've crossed the line, yep. you know? And so you may only have a budget of $3,000 and they want $1,500 for a permit, right. you know? And it's just, it, it makes it very difficult to use public lands. There will be shoots where you have the budget where they say, yeah, when we want to get in there, we want to set up lights and we want to do this thing and that's fine and, and you'll have to build that accordingly. But, but there's such a wide scope of photographers between beginners, amateurs, professionals, the ultimate big deal or whatever, that it's just, it gets really, really, and it's like that on purpose. And so there shouldn't be a hard line, like they're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm sure you'll enlighten us a little further and we'll be happy to carry this conversation on next month. Okay, some other things that I saw at uh, Photo Plus I want to talk about. I'm in love with this. I am, and you think there's problems No, no, with there it. is, but let's talk about okay, it. Okay, so Lexar, Lexar, which makes great card readers and great cards. Lexar has a tower now, this little tower piece here. This tower, you can plug in four readers into it. So you can put in an SD card reader, you can put a compact flash reader in it, but you can simultaneously download four cards at one time. And it's Thunderbolt, so it won't choke the speed of the card. It'll go as fast as a card will go. So for me, when I get back from a shoot at the hotel, I've got these four or five cards we shot today. I don't dare erase them until I have taken all the cards and I backed them up in two places. 
That takes hours and hours. Oh, and just, you it's, know, it's, it's start, you get back to the hotel and you start, day. exactly, yeah. and you're, you're up until midnight, you know, trying to get them all downloaded. So I think this is fabulous. It does have an SSD module that is 512 so, or 500 and... So can you put in your cards and then copy straight to an SSD module? Yes. Okay. So an SSD cool. module yeah. can go to the bottom of 500 uh, gigs. Yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> and Ken just arrived. Oh. And Ken just arrived. Oh. I love Ken. And it's even got a, look, it's, it spins. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, so this is great. But okay. now this is, this is probably the USB version. Okay, but they're coming out with a Thunderbolt version, which is one I'm very excited about. So these all just unplug. Pull one of those guys out of there. I don't know if the model will. And maybe they don't. Yeah. Not on this one because it's for display purposes only. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but they, it's, you pull those out, but it has an SSD uh, module you can put in there. So you could be running three cards into a 500 gig backup. Yeah. Or you could be just downloading two cards simultaneously backing it up to the two SSD modules, mm. which I really like that. I mean, it's a little big. If I have to carry it in my suitcase, take it on location, that's a little awkward. You know, yeah. I wish it wasn't so I big. Feel like, I feel like it could be so much smaller. It seems like it. The only the, the thing that makes it this size, though, is that if you're plugging multiple SSD drives in, you're going to need that much space. See, yeah. I'd be happy if that, that, that tower was half as big. And you didn't have these weren't removable. You just yeah. plug your cards into it. Just four cards. Four cards. Just, and, and just either either compact flash or SD. Maybe two compact flash, two SD or something. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, the bottleneck is is going to be your whatever hard drive you're copying to. That's the bottleneck. Oh, that, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. And so, you know, let's say you've got two external G drives or something like that that you're going to. It's it's You're still going to run into the issue of... What's the speed if you've got a 7200 RPM or even an SSD drive? If you've got that kind of budget, you know, it's like that's no matter. I think, what is it, like 300 megabit write speeds these days on SSD drives and something a little bit slower than that on, on 7200 RPM drives. Um, so Lacey yeah. makes the rugged drives. Uh -huh. The ruggeds, they have this new series of ruggeds, which I absolutely love. But you're getting uh, 387 megabyte write speeds. Write speeds at 387 megabytes. So if you're downloading from this onto one of those, if you're downloading to the SSD in this, you're not going to have a bottleneck. No, you're not. No. And and I mean, 387 megabyte write speeds. You're you're looking pretty good. So I think Which, you know these are these are writing at like 100 100 megabytes per second, probably for the compact flash mm -hmm. cards, so the faster ones. So yeah, you can get four of those at about uh, at about the speed. That's that's awesome. Yeah. Probably the Thunderbolt. Unlimited. Unlimited. No, nah, it's probably it's probably gig, gigabit per second, which is. We were kidding about the unlimited. <laughs> we were. I mean, it's obviously not unlimited. Actually, do you have it on your notes? How how fast the Thunderbolt will will transfer? Oh, that's probably a good idea here. Let's see what I got here. Four. Okay, Thunderbolt, and up to four times the speed of you. So two gigabits per second. Two gigabits uh, per on, second on the Thunderbolt is is the is what it could potentially transfer at. So the ideal setup, it seems to me, would be to have a, an SSD module in this. In here. And then three compact flash or... You well, know, you could have yeah. four readers. You could have three compact flash and an SSD card. Yeah. You know, because you can plug and play those. Though They also have a cable that goes into them that you can use them individually. Oh, cool. Out of that uh, So you that pull setup. them out and you've got a little cable. Yeah. You can, oh, that's can use great. Them I like also. that. I like it. So I, I'd say great system. Anyway, yeah. that was the thing I thought was pretty cool at the show. So cool. All right. The other thing I and I actually I actually bought one because I've been wanting a case that's a little bigger. And so the Think Tank photo case, it's called the 40 Manager 40. It's just what? I just every time you say, you know, like bigger or better, I just think of 11. Just, well, because that case goes to 11. But this it's just, case it's just does go to 11. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> it's, it's but it's just three inches it's got, bigger because it. Because it can. Well, this one goes to 11. And it goes to 11. <laughs> but the reason I love it is that they're, they're old 30, Think Tank 30, the photo manager or production manager 30. You couldn't put a stand in there. That's, and yeah. we couldn't get four of the uh, North Star lights in it. You can get so four this in this one, one? Oh, four in it and a stand. And a stand. So, All right. But it'll probably, the problem with that is it'll be so stinking heavy yeah. that we'll have to hire Spencer to move it around. <laughs> it's the only <laughs> thing we'll be able to do. <laughs> So anyway, I thought that's a new case. Yeah. Uh, it's a great case. They have some other. Do you have it yet? I, I did. I do. I had it sitting in a big box at my house. I forgot to bring it. Mm. I did. I'm very. I. I'm so over the whole storage thing. It's such a big pain in the butt. It really is. I've got. 
I've got so many storage unit uh, storage devices there. How many terabytes do you have right I now? I just figured it up. Okay. I have about 87 terabytes right now. Because <laughs> this guy, and it makes sense. I mean, we've talked about it before. You don't delete anything. And here's and here's the thing. Like I've had I've had uh, just recently. I had a company contact me. They were making a documentary on weddings, and they said, "Hey, we saw this video. That we really love. We want the full HD quality. We'll pay you a thousand bucks." And I. Contacted the client, said, hey, is this okay? And they said, yeah, sure. And I went back into my hard drive library two or three years ago, and I found it, full, found the full quality HD version, sent it off, and made $1,000. You know, it's like, and that, and that was, I mean, that's worth it right there. How much, how much does a storage thing cost? You know, a few terabytes, you know, like. The problem is, <laughs> when you get 16 terabytes of storage, it's going to cost you about $2,000. Yeah, no, there's Well, it's, there's it's newer more ones. storage than that, but when you do a RAID system. Yeah. You know, I, I heard a guy talk about storage at the uh, show, and he said, you're crazy to put everything on RAID systems. Hmm. He thinks you should have your working modulars on a RAID system. But then you have multiple, just fixed drive systems that, that aren't that aren't is, striping and rating. Okay, and if you're not turning them less, on. It's just more storage. You well, no, you're keeping the them on. Okay. You can, but okay. he he has a system where he has it on the cloud and offsite and wow. all kinds of stuff, which you kind of have to do. I mean, I think about it sometimes. If if uh, the office space where we have all of our uh, drives are at, if it burned down, my whole career would be gone in one one moment. Be really sad. It would be sad. Yeah, You're making me sad, JP. I'm feeling sad about that. <laughs> but you know what? I went oh, through the same thing. You, how can you? Where can you go? Where well, you I have started. A cloud I service? put the iCloud, uh, the cloud service. There was one that I well, I used Backblaze, and it it said when I went to back up several of my Drobos in ten thousand three hundred eighty five days, <laughs> your your drive will be backed up. True. It's oh, like, man. I'm not kidding. <laughs> the really? It was over 10,000. I'm not, that's not a joke. That's the number that came up. It was going to be three plus years <laughs> before it backed up. And that wasn't In all of them. Years. This will be done. <laughs> it actually went a lot faster than that. It actually okay. did a lot, lot did faster you, than that. But, do you uh, have, a, how many gigs on the cloud do you have? Ter how many terabytes on the terabytes, cloud? Terabytes, probably now only about 20. Is the most we've gotten on there, wow. and and I've had some problems with Backblaze in that one of my drives is not backing up anymore. I couldn't huh. recover off from it, huh. and so I and you know what? I'm from the era where it's really nice when you pick up a phone and say hello. It's not working, but of course Backblaze is ran by you know three you know computer geeks <laughs> living in a garage out in Peoria, you know, and they don't take calls. You know, send us an email. We'll try I, to get back to you. Yeah, if there's someone watching from that has any kind of Backblaze. association with Backblaze. Help me out, man. Yeah. But it's email. a good system, just that one thing. Anyway, I thought Lacey, I, my favorite uh, at the show, Lacey had great solutions that go everything from, from 5 to 25. They actually had a rack system that I am very interested like a in. Kind a of server kind of system? A server kind of rack mm. system where you can put different modules in. So anyway, I'm going to do a Slam Lens lesson on storage. Yeah. On storage solutions. Lacey is a great one. Western Digital had some great... Uh, Great stuff going on. The one thing that is interesting is that um, what, people are going back to NAS drives, which are much slower. I don't even know what an NAS drive the, is. It's, a, it's an internet-based uh, box modular that is completely self-contained, but it's a little slower. But people are using them as their own personal iCloud. Hmm. So now you can get onto your drive from anywhere. From anywhere mm -hmm. And if somebody needs an image or something, you can ship it, take care of it. No I like problem. that idea. It's really it's a great keeping deal. Keeping everything in the office. So, bottom line for me in this whole conversation is, I am going to up what I charge my clients to store. To store, and that comes. I used to have a, a thing called, uh, you know, Polaroid and then film, mm -hmm. and now I have on there storage. Yeah. I, I charge a fee. I charge three hundred fifty dollars on every shoot I do. It should be a lot more than that, because I save it. I save it forever. I mean, because you, sometimes your shoots are massive. Oh. Huge, yeah. huge. So, Terabytes. But it's just, it's great to have the information, have the stuff, so. Cool. All right, so, okay. should we talk about these guys? Yeah. Okay. So, so last time we kind of talked about some of these cameras. We've, we've mentioned the new GoPro that was coming out, but we didn't actually hold one. We didn't have and one in our hand. It's just fun to hold. So they, what I, what I do like about the new GoPro is that they kept the same design. Same footprint, yeah. Same footprint. So I've got, you know, I've got this quadcopter with a three-axis gimbal. 
and I would have been really sad. It chopped my arms up when we took it out. <laughs> I did. He, it came flying, crashing down, and he ran up to grab it, and it cut his arms up. Yeah, like, <laughs> on both my arms. He goes, it won't bother, it won't hurt. No, that didn't hurt that much. Just cut my arms on both arms. <laughs> did, did it, is it okay? You know, I was looking yesterday going, I got these weird scars on my arms. Julie goes, that was from the helicopter. I'm going, it was. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Actually, it's pretty cool that I can say I've got helicopter blade chop marks on both my arms. That is cool. I can't say that. That's true. All right. We could work that out if you want. <laughs> well, I'm sure we could. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so it's a, it's a 4K camera now in the same footprint. Um, and I don't know, I mean, we were just kind of talking about this 4K market. We've got, we've got now a few cameras. We've got the, the GoPro for $499 uh, that shoots 4K. $499, 4K camera. Yeah, and, and now we've got this, uh, the Panasonic, the Lumix, um, uh, what is it, the LX100? Yeah, LX100 that also shoots internal 4K. It's 100 megabits per second, 4K. Uh, What's the sensor? It's a micro four thirds. Micro four thirds. Okay. Fixed lens. You've got a 24 to 75 millimeter equivalent, full frame equivalent lens here, uh, made by Leica. It's a fast lens, 1.7 to 2.8. It's made by Leica. Yeah. Oh, that's well. Leica makes all of uh, Panasonic. Yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. You're lenses. right. Um, and I, you know what? I, I, I'd love to try it out. I don't know. I mean, what is the market for this? Um, I, you know, it's interesting to me because it, I don't think it's enough of a camera for professional application. But it's certainly a camera. If you want a walk around camera, that's a that's a great little camera to drop in your pocket. I'm not a huge advocate. I, I do it in my own life. I take pictures of everything that's significant in my life with my iPhone. You know, and I hate that actually, but there we go. Cute. Nice. Cute little guy. Absolutely. <laughs> no, I, you know it's the lens is sharp, but it's a good <laughs> it's just falling apart, <laughs> crusting. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but internal 4K for a camera that's $899. $899, fixed lens, everything. So, but, so I want to know uh, from you guys, is this something that you would, which you would look into purchasing? You've got uh, your GH4, which everyone talks about for about $1,700, and that does internal 4K, but now you've got this little guy which has got a fixed but lens. Look at the difference body size yeah. wise yeah. at what you've got going here. Okay, so here's our GH4, which is, I mean, people say it's small, and, but it's not that small. Not compared, compared to that. Compared to this little guy. So but it's about the same size. A7S is a little smaller. A7S a little is smaller. Well, yeah, because this is, this is still kind of got the handle coming out of here. It's a little bit beefier, and yeah. which I don't mind, actually. I mean, my A7S, sometimes I feel like I'm just kind of just my fingers are barely wrapping around this tiny little thing, and it's this massive sensor on this little. I feel kind of weird. It's like like you can't really get a hold of it very well. Yeah, it's like stepping into size 14 and a half shoes. You know, and you just go, oh, uh, well, how do I walk around? You know. Although at at Photo Plus, everyone's still buzzing about the A7S. I well, mean, course, it's the yeah. camera that everyone is talking I about. I love the A7S. I mean, it's as far the the thing that makes it absolutely worth it for me after having used it for a month now is the 60 frames, 1080p. Just, you love that slow oh, motion, oh my gosh. 60 frames. I didn't, I didn't know how much I loved that slow motion until after I started playing around with this thing. And I, I'm doing, I mean like, I'm just about, um, weddings, it's of course stunning, beautiful. Yeah. Like, like and, I, you know, like before it was a problem, if it was a dark room, cranking my, uh, my shutter up to 125 to get that, that double shutter. Well now it's not. I mean, I, yeah. I don't even think about 10,000 ISO anymore. You know, this is this sounds like a test, but yesterday we were shooting, Lars and I, on set, and we put an A7S inside of a cardboard box <laughs> with just a flashlight from Lars's phone, and we photographed a black cat <laughs> going into the box with nothing but a... And it looked well, great. Yeah, it looked great. I mean, I mean it, it was, was green, of course, because it was an iPhone flashlight, but... <laughs> Yeah, and the sensors read a little bit green on the Sony cameras. Yeah, they, they are pretty consistently just a touch, touch green, but um, but no, I mean it's it's an impressive camera, and uh, and I and I love having it. I mean it's 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 there photographically there are things I miss about my 5D, but um, as far as video goes, oh my gosh, I mean you saw like we set it up on a glide cam. And I flipped out the screen. That's so nice. And I got the slow mo shot. I was I was like kind of just right on the ground, and the screen was just facing me, so I could I could just look right down, and and it does the same thing. You go up, and you can flip it out a little bit, and it's just, I mean, it's 
the screen alone is, is just awesome. But fabulous. Yeah, so but back to this this kind of lineup right here. Here's three 4K cameras. We got seventeen hundred dollars, eight hundred and ninety-nine dollars, four ninety-nine dollars. I wanna know uh, about this camera, if you guys would buy this camera and why. And I wanna know what market it's for. Yeah, what kind of application? How would you use that camera? What would it do for you? And uh, why would you make that decision? Mm -hmm. Great to hear. Yeah. Okay, for our next item, let's see what we can get. <laughs> Where are we going? Okay. <laughs> what, are you, what are we doing? Yeah, I couldn't really find anything, so let's just go on to what else we got here. <laughs> we got the third camera out, and we might as well use it, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> speed, speed boosters. Speed boosters. So we've talked about them, haven't ever shown them. From the um, very, from just give me, uh, I don't know anything. Let's okay. help our, our listeners understand speed boosters from the beginning, because right. we get comments and, and people ask about it all the time. So. The GH4, everyone's using this camera. It's, everybody loves it because it's got internal 4K and it just it looks beefy and it's not in as high dynamic range as some other cameras. But um, it's got one, a great megapixel count as well, actually. Yeah, it's a it's a great camera, but it's a micro four thirds sensor, which means that you've got about a two time crop factor from your traditional full frame. So if you've got a 24 millimeter lens on a 5D, it's going to look like a 50 millimeter lens on your GH4. So we've got the speed booster. And what it does is it's kind of the opposite of a two-time or uh, an extender. Mm -hmm. So it actually... Kind of like a converter? Yeah, it zooms out. And what it does, when it zooms out, I don't even know how the glass works. I mean, it, to me, it's just magic. Like, you talk... I mean, I've, I've read on them. I've kind of understood a little bit of the science about these speed boosters. But it still just seems like pure magic to me. So, basically, it's, it's the opposite of a teleconverter. So, it... Makes so it's not going to bring things in, it's going to bring things, things out. out. And what it does, in essence, is it takes your 50 millimeter equivalent lens and it makes this a Super 35 sensor. Now, so it's like a 1.6 crop So factor. Super 35, that's pretty nice. It's great. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to look a little bit more like a 7D or uh, mm -hmm. like a C100, more of a crop factor. It increases your aperture, so you get more light intake and it increases the sharpness, which that still doesn't make any sense to me. There's got to be a downside somewhere. There's no <laughs> downside? No. There's no, except for, I mean, I guess you put another centimeter of something on your, but that doesn't seem like much of a downside no, to me. No, not really. So then you throw your lens on, Canon lens on, and now you can use all your Canon lenses with a Super 35 internal 4K camera for That's 1700 incredible. bucks. I love it, man. And it's, everybody likes the look. I mean, it, what I have heard is that it, it takes a while to get used to the camera. There's, there's certain ways of shooting uh, that seem to work better. There's, someone just did like a, an anamorphic test on this camera, um, and it was absolutely beautiful after he graded it. And that's, Are you talking about work and post? Work and post okay, with, speed the, with the GH4. Yeah. 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 So well, I, I haven't isn't there an before. autofocus issue with these as far as it, the autofocus doesn't, uh, doesn't respond as well? Yeah. It's a little slow to yeah. respond. It's, and it's slower. I mean, it's, and that's, I have the speed booster on my, or not speed booster, but the Metabones adapter for my A7S. And it does transfer autofocus. And it's, it's decent, but it's a lot slower. Yeah. And, but yeah, no, I mean, the fact that you can even transfer autofocus to a different, completely different camera system yeah. is, is impressive in itself. So talk about it with regards to this. Also, like on your A7S, you got a, a uh, Metabones yeah. to be able to put all your Canon lenses on your A7S. Yeah, and that doesn't speed boost, of course, because it's a full frame it's a straight sensor already. Straight yeah. conversion, so. Yeah. So, no, uh, speed, um, Metabones, they make really solid adapters. That's one thing. All my other adapters, and, and sometimes quality adapters, there's a little bit of lens shake. You know what I mean? Lens wiggle. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, where the connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. not not in the Metabones, mm. not at all. They're, they're super solid. They're really tight. I mean, when you go to put the lens on for the first time, you're going, is this? Is, it doing is this the right, right thing? Yeah. Because it's, you know, you have to really yeah. push it on, and but it's super solid connection. So there's a little information about Metabone Speed Booster, yeah, which yeah. is actually a great little setup. Yeah. So now it's time for what's in JP's. Ugly cameras bag. But it's a little bit less ugly. A little less ugly, and it's got my name on it. Is it is embroidered? Embroidered. Who embroidered JP's your ugly cameras bag. So I've got some interesting things in here today to talk about. These are things that companies have sent us. 
I have this verse for Lars. It's a skunk skin hat that everyone should have at least one of. Of course you do. <laughs> I'm not wearing this for long. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> what is going on today, man? Okay. This is the beauty kit that, uh, this is the beauty oh, kit. We talked about this. We right? talked about these. These are the big ones from, from uh, Roscoe. These are uh, great gel kits, and they're a whole set of them here. Mm. Got it. one that's, is that the beauty one? Beauty yep. kit. Color. Color, color effects. effects kit. Diffusion Ooh. kit. So these are just, the gels are, what size are so they? One 18 by, one? by 18? One by one. They yeah. go into a gel holder, right? Yeah. Yeah. I want this one. Yeah, these are, these are fabulous. I absolutely want this one. Well, we'll get a whole set of them for you here. Yeah. Photo lighting. <laughs> Digital after dark kit. Hmm. That could what? be fun. Let me see this. Cinegel sampler kit. Oh, this is great. It's got your. These are made by UV. Roscoe. It's all Roscoe's kits. They're they're in these kits. They're twelve by twelves. The reason these are good is because it gives you an option to put these things in these larger LED yeah. lights. You can tape them on the front of them. I mean, it's just some great. Uh, Great gels. We showed it last time in my bag. I still have it from last time. We had this whole series of small uh, Roscoe gels that goes for your speed lights, which is very nice. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So it's the same setup. All right, let's see what else we've got in JP's bag here. Oh, well, yeah, we got that. Uh, a Man, wooden getting... duck that my mother made for me at Christmas one year. <laughs> Everyone should have a wooden duck that your mother painted you. <laughs> mom, I love the wooden duck. I do. Well, you still have it. So I that's... still have it. Did your mom give you the skunk cat too? Nope. Okay. I, I did that all on my own. <laughs> Wait, you did this? No, I bought it. <laughs> I don't want Okay, this last anymore. thing in JP's... I don't want to wear this anymore. <laughs> Here, you can put it back in the bag. Okay. That's all right, put it down there. there. Last thing in our bag. This is something I saw at the show. They sent us a couple of these. This is called Grip and Shoot. Mm. This is a great little thing. I've got two of these. One for Lars, Ooh. one for me. Wonderful. That's it for JP's bag today. So you just, you put your, it clips your iPhone 5 in there? You clip your iPhone 5 in. It's got a little handle on it. Okay, so I'm gonna set this thing on here like that. Clicks in place. And it's Bluetooth. So the minute I uh, turn on my app here, there we go. Okay, so I'm live here. Except I put the phone in wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm getting well, no picture. It looks really dark. <laughs> it's very dark. All right, so. And why are we playing with these? And there's probably a million great things like this here. Because they sent them to us. That's why we're playing with these. Well, that's great, actually. Okay. Just kind of stabilize the shot. There we go. So and it's got a trigger to, to roll, stop, record. Yep. Video. So Ooh. all you do, and we can do the little, there's the uh, Kate in the background. Got a picture, just click on it, takes a picture. Super cool. Okay, we got the uh, selfie going here. Here you go. Oh, I zoomed that in. Oh, there we go. Okay, yeah, there we go. go, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, thanks to the folks over at Grip and Shoot for uh, sending these to us. Yeah. And uh, we will use these. So there's what's in JP's ugly canvas bag. Is that everything? That's it. A duck That's all and I a got. skunk hat and a Grip and Shoot. And, and the Roscoe's gels. gels. And Roscoe gels. Yeah, those are cool. Hey, come on, send us more things out there, manufacturers, so we can put it in our bag. <laughs> <laughs> if it won't fit in the bag, just send it to me. That's right. Yeah. So now it's time for what does Ken want to talk about? We usually don't care what Ken wants to talk about, but we're going to let him talk about some things anyway. <laughs> but today, I think he might have something worth listening to. Actually, last month was pretty good. Wait, we're we, surprising we the, us. The pen, uh, not the Pentax. Pentax. The Pentax. Pentax. We did. Yeah, the 645. The that amazing was... camera that none of you will ever buy or afford. <laughs> <laughs> Including ourselves. <laughs> Including ourselves. We just showed it again today. Did you? Yeah. Have you sold one yet? I've sold it to a couple clients. Yes. Well, and I get nothing but good reviews off of them. Oh, it's got to be a great channel. Yeah. There's no doubt about Quite it. Quite happy. No doubt about it. Okay, so Ken, what have you got so here? I Well, we just brought in this line. It's uh, There's a couple different ones from it's uh, My Mic Company, or it's like from my company. M-Y? M-Y. Okay. Yes, it's, uh, it, yeah, sorry. It's This is actually called the My Mic. So it's M-Y-M-Y-K. Hmm. Um, 
This is actually a small microphone for on top of the camera. Yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, you've been using it already in your shooting. So I know you guys might try to go back and forth and see on We're the audio side. We're going to do a little side. test with it right now. We've got a Rode, small Rode mic. What's that Rode mic? Video mic pro. Video mic video pro. Video mic pro. So we've got a small video uh, mic pro by Rode, and we've also got the My the mic, mic. Yeah, rolling. And we'll switch back and forth right now and just see what... Uh, yeah, now it might pick you up a little better because as you got the camera pointed directly at you, because it is a very directional microphone. Yeah. They it's are using... Lars at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do the test. How about that? Okay. So you can talk. <laughs> I just want to talk. It does have an isolation to it, so everybody's looking at the bands and everything like that. So I know you guys mentioned about. Yeah, just like that. that. My, my initial thought was that the, the Rode Mic Pro from Rode is no had had the built-in bands, the built-in shock mount. I just kind of, I mean, it's a much taller microphone because of that. But to me, it seemed it seemed like a little bit more of a. I don't know. Isolation. Isolation. I got you know you, we were mentioning follow focuses can kind of vibrate a little bit and. Well, they're using a metal tubing in here, so they're not using plastic tubing, so that actually helps mm -hmm. with taking away some That's of right. the actual audio, uh, external audio that you might be picking up. Another thing too is uh, it is a super cardioid microphone that they're putting in here, if I remember correctly. So it's a very directional mic at the top of that, and they have a couple of accessories like this, which is made by Rycote. So you're familiar with Rycote, yeah. right? Professional. Yeah. And this just literally slides right on, if I can get it to slide on. So now you can go outdoors into your windy environments and you'd be, you know, fl fluff it up a bit. And work very well. Yeah. It's designed to work off of a little button battery, so it's absolutely lightweight. And that's where, you know, you've got 9-volt batteries and some of these others, yeah. which is a little bit more weighty. Yeah, that's what the road takes, a 9-volt battery, and it's so, a bigger profile. It's a very light, a very small profile, which is really nice. Yeah. Well, the they're also making this so you can actually put it directly into an iPhone with their adapter cable. Oh, So fantastic. you could record audio into your iPhone. Into your iPhone. With so this, use your iPhone as a capture device. As a capture device. So if you want to do an external mic or if you wanted to do a shotgun microphone and later mix it with your camera audio or your camera video footage itself, you can do so. So again, you've got a small profile microphone that works very well. I wonder if there's a way to adapt it to that grip. <laughs> yeah, you can sure. Absolutely. Microphone on the on the top or something like it that. It had a, it had a piece on the top. I'm did pretty it? sure. Yeah. Oh man. Well, I'm not sure if it did now. Well, yeah. they also made this, which is called the the smart. This is their link. So it's the my link. This one actually is a mixer for on top of your camera. Now, everybody that's bought all the inexpensive Canons and the inexpensive basically Nikons that you have no control over the audio whatsoever, this actually has an AGC defeater built into it. Uh, AGC is the auto gain control. So this will actually defeat the auto gain in the camera. So you can control the levels of the microphone right on here, listen to it at the same time, it's and got a headphone port as well. It's got so a headphone, headphone port so too. Yeah. Hear it. So there's no there's no uh, meter. What do you call there's it? No there's no VU meter. But there is on the camera. There is on the camera. So, but so I, oftentimes what I find, you know, it's like if I've got a headphone jack here, that's fine. But then once I go into camera, I have no idea what it's doing. Well, point taken. And that's why <laughs> they also come with their little cable that will go directly into your phone. And as you can backup. as a backup. <laughs> so you can actually record <laughs> into your phone. At the same time, if you wanted to do an off-camera mic, you could do it that way. Or if you wanted to have a backup of your audio just in case, you've got a backup of your audio now going into your phone pocket, you know, your phone which is in your pocket. Uh, everything is then mixed into post and you've got everything going on okay. <laughs> So, so let's, they get, really let's did. get real life on this. I mean, if we're on set and we're using, uh, you know, we've got some pretty sophisticated auto, audio that we're using already. This is really a DSLR this, solution. This is for the gun, run and gun that, yes, run and gun that doesn't really, really doesn't understand audio too much, but knows they needs, need to get audio. Needs a little bit better. They need quality something better. Camera. Yeah. So you get a small profile again, lighter weight because you're run. You just said it, run and gun. Yeah. Well, how much other accessories are you trying to pop onto that camera system that makes it so much heavier to handle and manage versus always trying to throw it on a tripod, which is what we should be doing in the first place? Well, so what makes this the uh, the mixer? What makes that mixer worth the time versus just putting the microphone? If you're doing run and gun, why not just throw the microphone on your camera? Okay, and first off, go most of the it. time, okay, you might not need to have this with, like, say, a 5D Mark III. Because a 5D Mark III, you have a audio jack on the camera body, so you can monitor the audio. The first thing you always need to do with audio is monitor it. Mm -hmm. Make sure it's not getting the hisses or the pops or anything like that. If you 
get that, you don't know about it until you hit post, what do you do? Um, so if you're talking about like a, a Rebel TE4i, you're not going to be able to a, monitor. Well, yeah, you can't monitor on a yeah, Rebel TE4i. No Plus, the Rebel TE4, if I'm not mistaken, does not have a level control for audio. Yeah, no. So doesn't. you have to actually be very dependent upon the camera, making sure that your audio is coming through. And what happens on, say, the Video Mic Pro, it overgains. So when it overgains, you can't physically use that microphone because you're getting a hiss so how, and you're getting background talk to me noise. Because I didn't know it was possible to to defeat the gain automatic gain control. What, how does that work? What, what they're doing is they're taking because remember we're dealing with mono channels right yep. here, and the camera's recording in stereo. So what you're doing is you're actually oh, you projecting on the left channel a high frequency, so you're which like disables a, like it. A, like a tone, basically. Yes, you're getting like a, a tone generation. Zero dB tone. Bingo. That's cool. So what you're doing, so in fact, is... So explain that to, to those of us who okay. don't know what a zero dB tone is. <laughs> <laughs> it's creating a tone on the left channel that in post just we're going noise. to remove. It's just noise. Okay. So what that does is that actually causes the camera to go, oh, I have a signal. I have something coming in. So I really don't need to change my levels now uh, because I'm getting a solid audio feed. So not, which it's is not what trying it to catch up with. It's kind of too loud or yeah, too soft. Exactly. It's just, it's, it's, uh, so it's, it's getting, getting the same tone. all the time. Okay. It's zero decibels, and so it's it's always it's always hitting. Oh, this is zero decibels. This is right where Perfect. we need to be. So it's not crunching or yes. pushing the limiter back at which all. Which is so why this works yeah. very well then, because then I can control the levels on here if I needed to, and I have the ability of monitoring the audio too to make sure that it was recording okay. And if, again, you're not sure what you're getting in the camera, if you're not looking at the VU meter on the camera, and you don't know how to read a VU meter, then you can have it going into your phone, per se, because there's a backup for your audio all, again. All sorts of well, software. Well, if you're, doing audio, yes. if you're yes. doing audio, you ought to learn how to, to read a VU meter, because it's not that hard. Well, that's, yeah. Like focusing a camera, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, you got to be able to do it. That, actually. <laughs> This is great, actually. Just between 6 and 12. So, so just, just so, know that when you go into post, you, you're going to have one channel, and probably your, your right channel is just going to be... Left channel. The left channel? Left channel is where just, they give you the sound. Okay, the so right channel is the only audio you're going to get. Yeah. You so you're, copy that to your left. There are lots of ways in post that you can just use the right channel, double it, it or yeah. just, just throw a data aside yeah, as well. Absolutely. But now this doesn't work with just the my mic. This works with any mic. So okay. we could put the road so mic. You can put it. the road mic. Yeah. Get actually more potential out of the road mic with this little adapter. I gotcha. Uh, it's similar to like what the Beach Tech does. This does not, however, any have any XLR jack inputs. Mm -hmm. uh, if you need That's to do some adapters, yeah, it's not phantom powered either. So you know you do gain, you know, a, a drawback when it coming to the professional broadcast mics. Right. Well, it's just different types of microphones. Exactly. So, but yeah. remember, this is so the more smaller. What kind of price range are we talking about for each of these well, items? The Mike is actually selling at 179, okay, so which is a little 50 less. bucks cheaper than the Rode Mic Pro. A little less than that one, but a little more than the Video Mic. And then on the adapter, it's 250. So you're 250 for the module itself to control everything, which makes it a nice little package though for. So about so what is so do they what, sell this the mic, windscreen mixer package? Yes, it's all separate. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a package, Ken. That's not a package. We make a package. That's called a whole separate. <laughs> so we can, make now, let a me package. tell you. So, so, so how much is just the mixer? 250. 250. Okay. But that's, the, isn't like a Beach Tech 300? 300 to 400. If yeah, you want to go. XLR, fan of power, I mean, it's like. Okay, but look at the more, weight yeah. of the Beach Tech. Yeah, but. Which is going to be in your hands now because you're running and gunning. Yeah. That was the whole purpose behind so it. So Beach Tech is a it's small. Says large box goes underneath the camera. So you got a much larger. Which, they're great. Do not get me wrong. We sell a lot oh, of them, yeah. and they are absolutely fantastic. And uh, so on this, a camera this system. kit right here. Well, this this is oh, just, just the, the uh, link. So that's the link aspect. Then you got the mic, which is separate. And for those GoPro mm. users, mm. we have the sports mic. Because what do we hate the most when we're dealing with the audio on a GoPro? Everything. <laughs> exactly. So this. Anything to like. I know. <laughs> yeah, this one actually, they're now coming with the USB adapter, so you don't have to buy that separate, which is kind of handy. Uh, it, you do have to have their either frame or you have to have their skeleton housing for it. 
or you can try to modify the initial housing to, however, never oh, have it again. That. Yeah. Uh, be Put waterproof. A big drywall screw in it. <laughs> yep. Anything is possible. So, uh, but this clips onto like uh, your helmet or a visor. Oh, so it's um, got a big so clip. So it's got a clip right on the side here. Yeah. But now you can do a narration because it's a capsule uh, capsule microphone right oh, here fun, by actually. your mouth. So when you're speaking or when you're going through and screaming your head off because you're frightened out of a whatever, you can mm -hmm. capture all that. So is that mini jack? This is a USB. mini jack, no, it's USB. but they have a USB adapter because that's how the GoPro has to so have. So the older it. one. So now, but the newer no. GoPro. The new, no. The newer GoPro has a microphone. Did, did you not look at that? Yeah, let's take a look. Okay, so on the side, USB only. Oh. Sorry. So this is for this. That's the black edition. Yeah. So, so you have you a know, USB that goes in here, and that defeats the audio mic internal on the camera, and it's now this mic. <laughs> hey, I got to go back to this, though. So. Ken. Yes, sir. This is a small, low profile device here that I can set on top of my camera. It needs a hot shoe, a cold shoe on top of it, so I can stick my monitor on top of that. Now I've got a nice, compact little setup. Where's the cold shoe, man? How expensive is it? to make a cold shoe on top of this. Okay, so <laughs> as you understand, I'm sure, they created the hot shoe on a camera back in when, 60s? Okay. Well, they've had time to perfect they've it. They've had time to perfect it, okay. But the problem is you have, now how much weight you're trying to put on top of the camera on that small cold shoe, or, in this case, hot shoe. Yeah, but I put a, I put a Red Rock Micro a, a hand rig uh -huh. that fly the Mark III off that. Okay, and that's what else is connected off of that top? That's it. Just the weight of the Just camera. Just the weight of the camera. So now you're talking about adding all this additional weight on top of the camera, which means, okay, this is not heavy, but your monitor is. Yeah, monitor's heavy. And so now you're adding... I think, I think the issue is that this plastic top... That would never survive. No, because it's, it's connected here. And what you, about, how about this? Why don't the monitor manufacturers make a shoe on the top of their monitor so you can put the mic on that? Hey, I don't care who does it. They didn't do it. For <laughs> well, but there is a solved solution for you. I, <laughs> if I remembered, it's around here somewhere. I'm probably through it. Right oh, now. no, there it is right there. Yes. <laughs> so... I have one of these. <laughs> so this is your solution. This is what they call basically a reindeer. And it's a two <laughs> shoe adapter for that on there. And then you have your, your monitor. monitor. Yeah. So you do that kind of thing. And then you put a monitor over here or vice or versa. Or vice versa. Yeah. So this works out really well. This one happens to be made by Coolux. Uh, we've got a couple different versions of it. Some There's even like a third one too that you have actually have three. Uh, but these are your solution to basically doing what you're asking to do. So there's not really a reason to build off of this further. You can build it this way. Like how many hot shoes can you go on? <laughs> well, that's where I was going to go. You really may consider using a cage system then if that's the case. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, and that really makes sense, you know. So and basically on the Red Rock rig that, that, uh, that the uh, how do you, how do you Spencer that? is using. <laughs> Just bring that in. I mean, yeah. we, can, we can run a, you get rail an systems, arm off you of that and all, all kinds of stuff. Things, so, yeah. Exactly. So, I mean, you can break Still off of recording. this with an arm <laughs> itself. So, you have the ability of coming off of the rail system. But I'm just still which, run and gun. Although for me, this is run and gun yeah, for video. I, this is I have run and to gun. have that. I love yeah. it. So, I mean, this is perfectly fine because we can focus. You've got the ability to start and stop. You've got everything that you need to really work off of, including now you've got your audio coming in here too. Although I wish there was a way to change, but this is a whole other issue, to change your uh, aperture off. No. All you want to do is change your aperture Okay, Ken, what else do you have to talk about? We can't take all day. Yeah, that's right. I, I, well, we could talk about the <laughs> oh, yeah, crazy no, light. Oh, you guys talk about this crazy light here. The kick. The, the kicker. What There's a kick light. Kick light. Kick light. So the kick light, it's an LED light that can be used. And, and this is actually a Kickstarter campaign. Okay. Oh, is it? So this was a Kickstarter campaign originally. And what they did was they came up with these funds and basically they're using these in set, um, some features per se, and they're putting them in the set itself. So it's designed as a kicker light. So if you want to, you can control it from an app that is Wi-Fi connected, and I happen to have that app it's loaded. It's towards the camera there so you can see it as it changes. So you can so literally, back in the diffusion? you know what, that's probably best, otherwise we'll probably blind the camera. Yeah. Because it is really harsh with that. So with the diffuser, we're able to change the color itself. On and your you, iPhone, he's I, got a, he's got I, a This cube. is my iPhone. So, on my iPhone, 
I have the actual hue ability that I can change it. I think it's so cool. If That's I wanted so to, I can actually look at a image overall. Now this is fabulous. Does it have a cold shoe on it, Ken? <laughs> It's got a quarter quarter mount thread. For it. Well, well as a matter of fact, it's designed to mount without the uh, phone the in its own case. I can mount the phone on the back of this. Nice. So I can control the whole light then right from it one self-contained system. <laughs> you have to buy an iPhone for you each You have to buy an light. iPhone for each one of the lights there, yes. No, no actually can, can you control multiple from the same app? Yes, absolutely. So That's you can cool. control yeah. multiple units. So from you the can same have these app. set up on you can toggle between each three or four of them and change the color balance. So you can hit the standard color balance the absolutely. tungsten. Daylight, all that kind Absolutely. of thing. Absolutely. It has effects that you can, and you, can you update, can you download so, different effects? Can um, you, you can create your own effects because what you can do is if you wanted to record, say, like uh, water, you know, how you have the rippling water effects. Mm -hmm. fire, well, you can fire, fire you yeah. record a video of fire, it will emulate what that sees for the lighting. Really? Serious? Yes. Now, it is, say that is that again. with the iPhone? So you record like Well, you like record water? the video. Uh -huh. You record your video so and your it will, say you record the fire. Okay, you got a fireplace yeah. and you're recording all the reds and the yellows and the, you know, flickering that's actually going on. Yeah. Well, it will actually emulate exactly that of what you're playing on there. Huh. So that's it, incredible. Yes. Love that. Very cool. I wonder how well And you're talking, when you it's emulate really it, it really emulates cool. the colors it sees. It's really emulating the colors it sees and, the, flick and the, the flickering and the intensity a little bit too. That's incredible. So you can do like lightning effects. Uh, they do like a strobe effect. So they've got a few other options. How much are these things? How much these are? Like? These are like 200 bucks. Do you get a t-shirt with it? <laughs> Unfortunately, you probably did when you got the Kickstarter campaign, okay. yeah. but that's okay. no more. So, yeah. uh, and a signed poster of the creators. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're under two hundred dollars. It's actually like one sixty, if I remembered right, for the Kickstarter yeah. for the, for the kick light itself. The diffusion is about another fifty dollars for that. Mm. So, yeah, the diffusion is like a little bit a uh, little bit more pricey than you probably expect, but it is actually built pretty well. I want one of these. I want three of them. I want. So here's what I'm thinking: like a kit of three that you can control all of them with your iPhone. Like, I mean, you can, when throw these, use them? you can throw them under sinks and, you know, you can change yeah. all well, the colors that, a little well, bit that's off. that's the thing. Say, say, you're, fil say you're filming that, somebody watching TV. Well, you always get that you flicker the of the TV, the light that's kind the, of changing yeah, a bit. Really so nice. you can actually put that in front of your individual that you're photographing or videotaping and you're going to see that flickering happen. See, we could have used that yesterday because it would have hidden nicely around that TV, <laughs> Absolutely. even though we're seeing the TV in the shot. Right, 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 right. You get a little glow behind. So what kind of a, a output are we getting? Are we getting, I mean, what's our equivalent? It's 20 watt equivalent. 20 watt? It's not that bright per se. You're right. Yeah. It is, like I said, it's, it's designed just for an accent. Yeah. It's designed for accent. All right. Anything else, Ken? Uh, I got one other thing. Okay. I always like talking about bags. <laughs> oh, are you kidding me? No. All right, that's in what Ken wants to talk about. So it's been great having you here, Ken. Everything was very good until you got to the bag, so thank you very much. All right, we're going to take a look today at the 7D Mark II. There's yeah. some great things about this camera compared to the 7D. Uh, actually, it's quite a, it's a larger megapixel camera if you're doing still photography. It has so from 18 not a lot, 18 to 20. 20. Yeah, so there's some step up there. Um, what are some of the other things? What's the video capabilities of this that make well, this exciting? There's I a couple gotta, of things. I, I, think, I think I've just got to come out there and say from the video side of things, I'm not, I mean, it's like... It was an upgrade, but I'm a little bit underwhelmed. I, I think that's a pretty fair assessment. Okay, so here we got we got the 60 frames 1080p. Bam! I mean that's like that's coming in. Everybody's doing that. The new C100 uh, Mark II that's coming out has the now 60 frames 120 or 180 or 1080p. Man, yeah, 60 frames 1080p. 1080p. Which everyone has to do now. I, I mean I just don't, why the Mark III doesn't do it is just it's a firmware update and it it's just kills me. It's a firmware me. update no matter what you say. Yep. So so. I'm a little bit underwhelmed with uh, the functionality. I mean, yeah, you've got 65 focus points, which I suppose is great. You know, for those of us who use autofocus, and I, I, I'm a closet autofocuser. You know. uh, that's all right. It's okay. Yeah. The first step but, is you know, admitting it. <laughs> <laughs> so the last one was 19 focus points, which is yeah. a huge difference here. So if you're rolling this around, this over here, and changing the points, it really I wish it had 150. I wish the whole screen, <laughs> the whole was, screen a, was an option. Yeah, so why not? I don't know. Why so not? You can slide yeah. it around and put it where you want it. Focus where you want it. But. I don't know how it works. And then, I mean, as far as is any other differences, it well, it's got it's got a higher uh, ISO capabilities, right? Yeah, so it's a little bit better in low noise. I mean, we were, we did a couple of test shots real fast in here, and I zoomed in at 3200 ISO, and it seemed pretty clean. I mean, of course, it's got to compete with at least the 5D Mark III. 
Um, and I think it's about that, that same is it sensitivity. Is the same world? Yeah, that same world, which is great. Um, it shoots 10 frames a second continuous shooting, and which is, which is great. I mean, if you listen to this, that's... You know, when I was out there shooting, uh, shooting the uh, uh, how to shoot wild animals without getting killed, <laughs> when I was out shooting that segment, uh, the, the shutter speed, or the uh, motor drive on the Mark III is pretty darn slow, man. Yeah. Gives you like a three frame burst. It's 3.9, I think. Yeah. So 10 frame burst, I mean, that's like. That's nice. That's, we're smoking, we're cruising there. Yeah. So, so that's great. I mean, other than that, other than those like three or four points, I think that's it. I mean, the, it feels about the same. I Any mean, improvement in the sensor? Same sensor. Canon hasn't done much to their sensor it's in a, a long little, time. It's a little bit, 20 megapixels, like we said, yeah. so compared to 18. But no, I think I think that's about it. A little bit more sensitive in low, ni low uh, light and um, 1080 frame, 60 frames a second. So that's about Well, it. let's take it outside, yeah. and uh, we're just going to see if we can grab somebody out here on the street and take some pictures of them right outside in front of Sammy's here. So we'll just take a few shots of it, look at some video with it, and uh, just see what we got. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Let's go, let's do it. Man. All right, let's just see if we can grab somebody else here. Yeah. That guy. Perfect. Let's ask that guy. Hey, sir, can we uh, can we take a couple pictures of you? Sir? Just hanging out here? Wait a minute, weren't you in Midnight Cowboy? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Like so I've got that continuous on right now, right? Yeah. Ooh. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you I don't do. know if we need 10 frames a second worth of this cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I think they made a couple improvements on the body. It might be the magnesium casing, which I think it had before, right? So yeah. But it, to me, it looks a lot similar to the 5D Mark III. Well, it's it does, it feels in my hand exactly like the Mark III. The layout on the back is yeah, kind of the same very thing. They similar. Put the zoom over here, and you got your built-in flash, though. Like I do love flash. that. I wish it's the Mark great. III yeah, had yeah, that. Yeah. Why not? You well, know? it's just it's a more you know when you get to that professional world. I know, but to, sometimes know. sometimes you just want you know, and it, it's not professionally. I don't ever use it. But if I'm running around and get a shot of my kids or know. you know something, Sometimes it's just nice, it's to, just have nice it. to have it. Yep. All right. Well, I'm gonna take a couple of shots of our uh, cowboy here. Okay. So lucky. They found this guy out here. Yeah, they just find this guy out here. Sounds like a uh, quieter shutter than the old one too, right? Yeah. All right. So let's let's do some video. See what we got. All right. Here, let's. See how quickly we can change over to uh, 60. I, I just want to see the 60 frames at 1080p. That's really, yeah. There we are. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead and strike some poses for me. Just look out now. Look out that way for it. Yeah, no, stay leaning against there. There you go. All right, that's all 60 frames. That's good. Now, yeah, what about this autofocus thing, huh? Got to figure that out. Because if he can walk towards us and keep it in focus in live view. Yeah, right? Wasn't that, or is that the 70D? Yeah, I'm going to go ask him. Okay, well, I had it. It, um, it should work in 24. Yeah. Yeah, because it's enabled now. All right, Spencer, I want you to... Uh, Go back walk, yeah, go back and then walk towards us. Stop. That was cool. Was it? I didn't touch the focus. The whole way. The whole way. Still just, one more time. I could, I could feel it going. Da -da 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 -da. Like he'll start walking and it'll pick up his face as he comes. Okay, go ahead. So pretty soon here. There it goes. And it's just pinging his face. And stop right there. Isn't that neat? That's pretty cool, man. I like that. It's better than I could do it, I think. Yeah. You could do it. Probably, but yeah. I mean but I mean we are at like a ten aperture right now, you know. So, so that's let's do this then. Oh we don't have any N D here, man. Well what is this? Seventy seven? I'm gonna go get some ND. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I'd love to see if we're yeah. at like two eight. Yeah, you yeah. know. So we're we're looking at this, and the autofocus that recognizes the face works really well. But we are nine, you know, nine aperture, which means there's a lot of depth of field. 
We're gonna get some ND on here, yeah, choke it down, see at 2.8, will it really follow somebody's face at 2.8? And that's really the test, so pretty cool though. Yeah, it's just, let's do this again at a 4.0. So that last one was like a 10.0 or 9, something like that. So yeah, bring that in. This is, this is what I really want to see is how well can it track him at a wide open on the back, it, back up a little bit more. Okay, right there. Right. Go ahead, Spencer. Go ahead. Is it gonna be able to pick up that face from the corner there? Ooh, there it is. Stop and right there. Stop. So the question would be, can you walk with him and will it just keep do it on 105 on a pretty like like fringe above, fringe up. And action. Okay, just strike, strike a pose there. Hey, do that do that again. Yeah, yeah. So we're moving. No, that's pretty good. Let's see that now. That's fast. Do you yeah. do you have a, a 70 to 200 millimeter, like a Tamron or a Canon? Um, I have a, I could get one. I have a Sigma one out. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Just something that's, yeah, I just want to see how it tracks on that long a lens. Okay, go ahead. Stop right there. Seated the lens. The problem is you've got a, a Sigma. Oh, that's great. It's going right with it. That's so great. I mean, we're on a, it, you see it a couple of times it loses it there, mm -hmm. but it gets right back to it. Right to you it. You can't pull faster. it any faster than that. Yeah, you faster than you can pull. Yeah, you can't keep it that clean. Here, you shoot a couple of times. Right. So okay, yeah. Yeah, let's have you just walk, walk all the way. This. Walk all the way down there and then walk back towards me. It, see the bars, I've got it set up. But as soon as he turns, that's great. Okay, go ahead. And stop. That's pretty cool. That's so nice. Well, I saw this on the 60D, the 70D. 70D, yeah. Uh, boy, it's been six months ago. And right, right. I was playing right. with it at the show. We talked about it on the show back then. I saw it on the on the uh, modified C300. You yeah. Know, you, send, you send it in, they do the dual pixel. And I thought about getting on, on one of my C100s. It doesn't Just one work, of them because, because it'd be great. For Glidecam, it's the same thing. They just you have to send it in. It's 500 bucks, and but I think the new one, the Mark II, coming out. There was some know, reason that there was a disadvantage to that upgrading it. There was some disadvantage. Oh, I can't yeah. remember what it was. was it, uh, something like it couldn't do face recognition or something like that. Like it, it just has like a an overall. I think yeah. that's what it was. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. really do what we're seeing there. Yeah, so maybe the new one does. Yeah. All right. Interesting. All right, let's go wrap this up. Well, we took the camera outside, the, the 7D Mark II, and we tested it. Uh, specifically, we were looking at that uh, face recognition uh, pulling focus. A lot I didn't more think, impressive. I didn't think we would, necessarily. Yeah, that's right. It seemed like not something we'd even worry about. Right. But man, it, so I, when, we, when we first started looking at the specs, I was a little bit underwhelmed. But then seeing, seeing that, I mean, we had a 200 millimeter lens on inside, wide open at 2.8, watching it snap into focus did a much better job and a faster job than I could have pulling it myself. Yeah, and it maybe yeah. it, it drifted a couple of times, mm -hmm. but you know what, if you're pulling focus, you're gonna drift. Way more than that. Absolutely. And it's nice, I mean, it's okay. People accept the, the drift, you know? It's like, and it's, yep. it's even a style these days where you'll, you'll let the focus float. And I do it on my Zeiss lenses all the time, where I kind of, even though I know I'm sharp, I'll throw it and bring it back. Cause it's just, it's just a soft look. And, yeah. And I, I like, but anyway, that that feature alone, I mean, we're talking about when we set these things, our cameras up on, on sliders and we're trying to get these slider shots. Uh, on a lens like this, a 200 millimeter lens, which we love to do, that compression's beautiful. Um, when we're going from one side to the other, the focus changes, mm -hmm. and sometimes kind of drastically. So being able to lock that in and just kind of get a nice sliding shot, that's, to me, one of its most powerful features. Well, my question became, if you've got the 7D Mark II and you've got the 70D, <laughs> you know, what, what's the difference in this to the world here? I mean, you've got a pop-out screen with a 70D. Mm -hmm. You've got the same tracking focus system. So you're getting the exact same focus system. Same, same megapixels. Well, same megapixels. megapixels. 
It's not as fast. This is like six frames, and that's ten. Five something, Five. and this is ten. So, and okay. I mean, you've got a magnesium casing on the Seven D Mark II. So this is indestructible. Indestructible, and that's this and that's is disposable. <laughs> so eighteen hundred dollar price point for the Seven D Mark II, and a twelve hundred dollar price point for the Seven D D. Seven D D. So what's the the advantage of this one is the pop out screen. Yeah, it seems to me, and I. I I mean, Lars likes, likes them. I love them just because if you're doing video or you're using the glide cam or whatever, it's yeah, just, just so get nice. Low mode and, yeah. The only thing, though, is I like the way the A7S pops out better than this. Do you? Well, because the reason is is that when you have this, if you're going to get it down here with it, you got to get it all out here yeah, to see what you're doing right, with it. Right, right. Whereas the A7S just, just pops whoop. straight up out of the back. Right. You know, and so you can get it down low and you can look down at it and it just works really nice. Right. It's a, it's a pretty great design. Yeah, yeah. This, I don't know that I love this because now you got this thing flying out here on the side. And, and you clip something and just, you know, yeah. if you go the wrong way, break it off. So if it just yeah. pops straight up, that'd be nice. Although yeah. you're probably wishing your A7S popped out here sometimes. No. no? Uh, so that's no, worked no. inside? Well, the, if I've got it up really high, I wish it would come, it would tilt down. Down. That's that is the one thing that yeah. kind of. Also, I one one other quick advantage: um, the 60 frames per second. Uh, That's right. Uh, 60 frames. Full 1080p is something that the 7D Mark II does that the 70 does not. Yeah. So that that was another advantage, but yeah. No, I mean. So where are we at ISO wise with this, as far as uh, you know, what it will handle? Well, it's probably about 3200 ISO is about where you start about to where see gonna feel the start noise. This shift, of course, yeah. it shoots all the way up to 12,800, but. I mean that's it's great that it can and it's great that the A7S can shoot up to 409,000 but you would <laughs> never use it. No. It's unusable at that it's point on both cameras. Sense. So um yeah, so about about the same as the Mark 3, the 5D Mark 3. You're looking at about 3200 ISO and probably about the same for that camera too if it's yep. the same sensor. Yeah, same sensor. Right. I All like right, it. so there's the 70D and more importantly the 7D Mark II. Two. Uh, you know, un like say, underwhelmed at first looking at it, but looking at that autofocus, that's pretty impressive. That yeah. is very impressive. So for the video function, that's great. Uh, what do you feel about stills? It's a camera. You know, as a camera, the stills it feels very similar to my uh, Mark III. Yeah. I but it, it seems like the shutter was a little quieter. It very quiet shutter. Yeah. Uh, you know, but it's again, you don't get that that larger sensor. It was going to give you shallower depth of field. Yeah. I'd still. Six of the five. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, Although, good to know. I wish they had the uh, that focusing in the five D. That's really nice. I didn't think I'd like it as much as I did. That's I thought it would feel too mechanical. Yeah. But man, I don't know. Pretty nice. I, I could definitely see an application. Yep. Great. So now for the word of the day. The word of the day for all you listeners who made it to the very end of this extremely long podcast and video cast. The word of the day. I think it's pretty obvious. It's pretty obvious what the word of the day yeah. is. Midnight, Midnight cowboy. cowboy. A little shout out to Brandon, our friend on the street, not the cowboy, but our other photographer friend who just bumped into us when we were shooting out there and took a couple of shots of us. So, Brandon, keep on clicking. Keep those cameras rolling. Keep on clicking. Hey, that's how we end this thing. Oh, yeah. So, this has been the trend. <laughs> this has been Trench from the Chan. The, sh the show. This has been the show that remains to be named. So, keep those cameras rolling. Keep on clicking. Okay, we're done. Are we done? I think so. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'll get some lunch. Yeah, it's done. I'm done. All right. All right. Let's go to the Apple store. Right. That sounds really fun, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs>